All right, hello everyone. Ron Bernier from BaseballSimResearch.com. Wanted to let you know um, about a project that I have at least a beta version of now after this past weekend um, for an auto sub utility. This is for your baseball sims, essentially for any baseball sim. What it does right now is it will suggest when to pinch hit, when to pinch run, and when to replace people defensively. You can also have it tell you who you want to use to pinch hit, who you want to use to pinch run, and who you want to bring in as a reliever. The key, uh, the key factor here is that it is going to be based on the actual player usages for that team for the season you're playing. So essentially it's based on managerial tendencies. Naturally, it has to have some sort of randomization. So, for example, if you have two guys on the bench uh, for pinch hitters are the only two guys that pinch hit in this inning and uh, score situation, and they both have the same quote-unquote ratings, let's say they're both 50, that's a theoretical number, um, then it's going to generate a number between 1 and 100, and it's going to choose which pinch hitter to use. Uh, there will be instances where... It will have one pinch hitter has a rating of 5 and one has a rating of 50, and it still chooses the 5 guy, um, mainly because, again, it does randomize. So it's not always going to choose the player that is the most used in that situation. So let's take a look at um, what I have up here, NPNG Board Reader. As many of you know, I do the... Uh, development now for Bill for this on the automation. Uh, this is 1975 season. It's not the current season because I developed the beta of the auto sub tool uh, for the 1975 season. I've got uh, things side by side here, or as they say up north, side by each. And I'm going to expand this uh, baseball auto sub uh, spreadsheet. So to use this, I tried to minimize how many buttons you have to click, instead just remembering to click on cells. So right now, it's it works best when you have the uh, as played lineups, right? Um, you come over here, you choose a game, Atlanta at Houston, and you double click on this load as played lineup cell, and it'll ask you, you know, hey, you sure? Boom, and it's gonna set up everything. Um, actually, in my testing, it worked a little faster, but I'm on a different laptop here. I'm a different, uh, I'm on a USB card, so it's a little bit slower. It brings in the starting lineups, the starting pitchers. It puts everybody on the bullpen uh, list that is available. puts everybody on the bench that is available. It sets the innings at the top of the first, sets the score to 0, zero etc. So a couple things to keep in mind when you're using this. Number one, First thing you want to do is go to the rosters tab and set up your rosters. So if you have, let's say we're playing the Baltimore Orioles team here, right? Start of the season, and we just leave everybody on the roster all the time. As long as all these are set to yes or Y, then everything's cool. Um, if you're using as played uh, lineups and transactions, you may have, let's say, four different people um, that are not active, right? Bob, let's say. Bill Alexander, Bob Baylor, and Don Baylor are all inactive for this game. It means they're off the roster. Not that you're not going to want them to sub. That's a different situation. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But that they're inactive. They are not on the active roster. So to move Doyle Alexander from active to inactive, you just double-click the cell. Don Baylor, uh, Bob Baylor, boom, Don Baylor, boom. Um, to switch them back, you just double-click. Boom, boom, adds them back. Um, all right, so that's that setting. The next three columns that you see, team games, game started, and games available, those aren't filled in right now. Those are actually going to be key in calculating the ratings. So some of the um, ratings are raw numbers. Um, I break things down by the score. There's four groups of scoring. Behind big, which is behind by more than three runs. Uh, behind, which is behind by one, two, or three runs. Uh, tied or ahead, which is a tie game, a one-run game, or a two-run game. And then ahead big, you're ahead by three runs or more. 
So based on the score of the game, it puts that situation into that category and the player is used as he was uh, in those situations. So if you have a relief pitcher that's used primarily in uh, blowouts, either when you're ahead big or when you're behind big, when you ask the spreadsheet for a reliever, the likelihood that that reliever is going to get picked over somebody else increases. So we tried to set it up so that they're used in the situations that they were. So that's one factor, the score of the game. The second factor is the phase of the game. Um, the phases of the game vary slightly based on um, whether you're looking for a pinch hitter, pinch runner, or a uh, reliever. So substitutions for defensive replacements, pinch hitters, and pinch runners bases the uh, substitute based on four phases. You've got very, uh, you've got early, mid, late, and crunch. Early, and this is off the top of my head, I, I hope I've got it right. Early is innings one through four. Uh, mid is innings five and five and six. Late is innings seven and eight, and crunch is ninth inning or later. Um, so based on those two factors, the score and the phase of the game, the game will, the spreadsheet will recommend a substitution. The relief pitchers are broken down a little bit differently. Uh, they are very early, early, 7th, 8th, ninth, and extras. So very early is to let innings 1 through 4. Early is innings 5 and 6. So these are where your long relievers are going to be recommended more. doesn't mean that they're always going to be recommended, but they're going to be recommended more. 7th, 8th, and ninth, pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then extra innings is also self-explanatory. So in those innings... And based on the score, it's going to recommend who you who you bring in. Uh, you can ask the application as we'll look at some of the options um, for different. Um, you can ask it for different parameters as well, such as uh, I'm looking for a left-handed pinch hitter, I'm looking for a right-handed pinch hitter, or I'm looking for any pinch hitter. Keep in mind on the pinch hitters, though, it does base it on the stats of the opposing pitcher's handedness. So a guy that did not pitch hint, pitch hint, <laughs> pinch hit, there we go, <clears throat> um, against left-handed pitchers will never be chosen as a pinch hitter against lefties unless your entire bench never pinch hit against lefties and then it still has to come up with a pinch hitter. So, but we'll get into that once we get into the game. Um, so first thing you want to do again is set things to active. You'll notice that bats is filled in for everybody. Throws is not filled in for everybody. Throws is uh, means I've pitched. So one interesting situation here is if you want it to recommend uh, position players as relievers in certain situations, you're going to have to add a designation there that they throw right or left. Um, when you're asking for a reliever, you can ask for a left-handed reliever or a right-handed reliever or any reliever. Um, so you're going to have to do that. Uh, the weird thing there, though, is the way the application is written. It's only going to recommend that player if they're on the bench. So if they're already in the lineup at a position, um, you're basically going to have to bring uh, bring that that player to to the mound manually. The other thing to keep in mind is that the application does not recommend when you pull pitchers. It only recommends when you want to replace the pitcher who you should bring in. So at least at this point, it's July 6, 2020. Um, it will not tell you when to pull the pitcher. So that's the rosters tab. That's the only thing you need to worry about. Make sure that all the players for your day are active as you want them. And the reason that I say these games available um, is important when we go live with this. Let's say you have a substitute September call-up. He came up on September 26th. And he only he was only available on the bench five games, and he played in one of those. Now, somebody that played in the same situation, who was substituted in the same situation once over 100 games, is going to have a less likelihood when that player is active, when, when both players are active, he's going to have a less likelihood of being brought in than the guy that appeared once in five games um, versus once in 100. Consider the once in 100 a 1%, and the one in five is 20%. 
the in the background if you if you have this games available um, filled out and I'll probably do some more videos on relievers especially starters as relievers starting pitchers as relievers because you want to make sure that they're um, active but not available to relieve when you don't want them to relieve so you've got to do some games available manipulation there you got to figure that out before the beginning of the season um, so it does take a little bit of setup or you can just leave it and it'll just operate the way it does uh, on the game tab so to load an as played lineup right you can load you can load lineups manually you can load lineups from as played right now manually the application will not save your pre-filled lineups that will be available soon uh, to do a manual um, lineup we first select our team from the drop down right so let's say we're going to say baltimore you know this just changes to baltimore i'm going to change this to boston and at this point i can double click on either one of these team cells and it will load in the drop down boxes all of the players and over on the right hand side the bullpens and benches and then what i can do is choose my lineup let's say i'm going to uh, lead off with Juan Benitez. I'm going to bet uh, Danny Doyle second. You'll notice I'm not going to change the positions, and right now at least that's uh, not really an issue. Um, I may do some automation there at some point, um, but right now we're not we're not going to do anything um, for that. So I'm going to say Jim Rice, Kyle Yastrzemski. I should pick people that are alphabetically early in. You'll notice that something else too, at least right now. Um, if I pick a player, I can actually pick them again. Don't do that. If you operate the utility, at least, you know, while it's in beta mode. This way it'll let you do it, but it obviously is not good to, to do that. And we'll add uh, Bernie Carbo there. And now if I double click on the Red Sox, you'll notice over here the bench is going to change. It's going to take those players off the bench. Okay, so that just means that, you know, they can't sub. And now if we look at, if we can go to the drop downs here, Denny Doyle, who's in the lineup, is no longer available as a sub. That'll work a little bit better down the road um, with who's available and who's not, etc. But regardless, once you have set this all up um, and you want to... Uh, you want to decide that, you know, Doyle Alexander and Mike Cuellar started, you know, yesterday and the day before. You don't want them available. All you need to do is go over here and remove them from the bullpen. So one of the things that you'll want to do when you start a game is take your starting pitchers and either your upcoming starting pitchers or your starting pitchers that you have just used, you know, the day before or the two days before that shouldn't be brought into the game and delete them from the bullpen. Anybody on the bench that you also don't want to play um, should also be deleted from the bench. All right. Um, the other thing that you would need to do is make sure that this says top one, which you can actually literally enter in top one. Just make sure it says top one, not top, or I'm sorry, top space one, so not top one without a space. It won't work that way. Um, scores, we're going to have to keep track of score as we go. It does not automatically add it. When you want to add a run to a team, you double click the cell. When you want to subtract a run because you did it incorrectly, you right click the cell. Uh, if it's zero and you right click the cell, it'll stay zero because the team can't have negative runs, even in 1968. So we want it to be two to nothing. Obviously, two nothing in the top of the first doesn't work, but let's just ignore that fact for now. If you want to call it that, that's right. He's going to um, take it as your word. So what we're going to do today, though, is we're going to choose today's Kansas City uh, opening day, Kansas City at California game. And I choose that in the drop down. I double click on load as play lineups and it says, yeah. Sure, let's go. I want to start that game. It's already started things here, uh, set things up here. Let's say uh, we don't want Frank Panana. He pitches tomorrow. Um, and Paul Splitorf and Marty Patton don't, I don't want them to pitch for whatever reason. I delete them. I'm all set. If there's a, you know, if I don't want Marty Patton to come in as a, he's probably come in as a pinch runner at some point during the season. Um, and this is an interesting fact you know if you have pitchers that are on the bench it means that they either were used as a pinch hitter or a pinch runner so if you have frank panana you don't want him in the bullpen but you want him available to pinch hit because he did during the season you leave him on your bench but off your bullpen 
So I think we're just about ready to get started. Next batter and end inning. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, next batter is to advance the batter. When you advance the batter, two things happen. Um, right now, Freddie Potek is the selected batter. Uh, Morris Nettles will be the selected batter when we move to the bottom of the inning. When I click on next batter, it checks to see if it should pinch hit for the next batter, in this case, Amos Otis. It also checks if it should pinch run for Freddie Potek. And when it has a pinch run suggestion uh, situation, it will say, obviously, if the player reached base. So if he has a 2% chance of getting uh, pinch ran for in this situation and it comes up positive and he doesn't reach base, you don't pinch run for him, obviously, because he's not, not on base. So I'm going to switch this back to this way. I'm going to start my game here with National Pastime Next Generation Plus, and I'm going to—I don't have to check with Freddie Potek. I'm going to roll, and hopefully everything works here. Base on balls ended that. Now I can come over here. Next batter. Let's look at this stuff. Right now it says it, it, I'm showing the debug messages during testing, just so you can see what's going on uh, behind the scenes, so to speak. It's checking pinch running for Freddie Potek. Uh, 45 is, is something you can ignore. That's more for me. The triple zero means there, Freddie Potek was with the game that's tied or ahead for the Royals in the early stages of the game, the first through four innings. He was never pinch run for. So if it comes up as triple zeros, it will never roll to generate that random number to see if it should pinch run for um, somebody. Obviously, early in the game, there's not a lot of substitutions that are going to get recommended, right, until probably the starting in the sixth or seventh inning with most, most teams. But keep in mind that players that got injured and were pinch ran for, players that got injured in and at bat and then were replaced defensively in the next half inning, those data, that data is actually included in here. So... This, if you have injuries turned on in your sim, it might artificially increase the number of times that a player is substituted. And it may give you some substitutions that seem weird. For example, I think the way I did this, I did this with my 1982 NPNG American League sim, the only sim I've ever, the only replay I've ever completed in my entire life. Um, Tony Armas had a a couple times I think where he was injured early in the game so it had a high not a high but a higher than normal which would be zero uh, rating for being replaced early in the game um, so it threw up a couple times uh, the suggestion that you know Tony Armas should be replaced that of course doesn't make any sense but it's because he was injured so what I usually do is ignore injuries in the game if I can and just allow the auto sub to handle the quote-unquote injuries right by replacing people in situations that it kind of doesn't make sense okay uh amos otis roll for him first on an error Take him over now john mayberry's up now earlier i said it does two things it checks for pinch hitters and it checks for pinch runners when you click on next batter however in the first inning it does not check for pinch hitters we're starting in the second inning, we'll start checking for pinch hitters. It doesn't do it in the first inning. Uh, Amos Otis was never pinch ran for, so we move along. John Mayberry, single, fields the bases. Hal McCray is up. Probably going to have a 15 to 5 game here. So. Um, if it were the situation where um, a player was injured and pinch ran for, it might pop up in the situation here. So in your, in your mind and your sim, you've got to um, basically understand that that means that the player was injured. Okay, so we just ended the inning. Brett, uh, I don't remember what he did there. He, he made an out of some sort. So Veda Pinson will be up next. And in the MPNG board reader, if you're familiar with it, it puts an X next to Pinson. It's going to start there. But let's stop and think about this for a second. When we say next batter, 
I said that two things happen. It checks for a pinch hitter and it checks for a pinch runner. We don't want to click the next batter right now because Veda Pinson is not coming up to the plate to the plate. The game situation may change. And in fact, the game situation did um, when Kansas City scored that run. I forgot to add the run over here in the spreadsheet. I'm actually kind of glad I did because in the testing, I did that a couple times and it, it does change situations. So you need to keep track of the score and update the score over here on the spreadsheet um, as you go. But the thing that I was talking about here is I don't want to click on next batter right now. I do want to click on end inning and technically it's end half inning um, as we all know. But that's going to label uh, George Brett as the last batter that hit and it's going to label Morris Nettles as the uh, batter at the plate. Right, so now you'll see in that debug messages down here, a whole bunch of information of things that it um, things that it checked in between innings. So all the triple zeros means they were never pulled defensively in this situation. Freddie Patek, uh, I'm going to guess, was pulled once in the 162 or so games that he appeared in the first four innings. So he has a rating of three. Um, if you don't see defensive uh, random rolls. You'll see those when we go to do pinch hitters and pinch runners later in the game. Um, but that three means that if he gener if we generate a random number between one and nine, uh, one thousand, and it's one, two, or three, he's going to get replaced. So again, you just need to imagine that he got uh, injured and is now being replaced. So let's go here when we roll. Single left, then thrown out. Mickey Rivers to the plate. Out at first. Now I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do the check over here on Mickey Rivers on pinch running. Reason I'm not is a couple couple things here. One, as long as your score doesn't change, you can actually check for pinch hitting and pinch running multiple times at a time. So in this situation, Mickey Rivers didn't um, didn't reach base, so we know we're not going to pitch run. And since we don't pinch hit in the first, I didn't have to check if Tommy Harper Harper um, should be pinch hit for. Right. The other thing is when a half inning starts, you can check the first three batters. Um, you can check, you know, when we go to the top of the second, I can check George Brett, Veda Pinson, and Cookie Rojas all at once. If I get to Fran Healy, then I've got to go over and click on things. Um, but I'll show you um, how we do that here in a second when we go to that inning. So um, I'm going to go to right the next batter coming up is Luke Bakhti. I'm going to go ahead do that. And then that roll. All right. So that's the end of the half inning. Bakhti made the last out. Lahoud will bat first in the next inning. So we don't want to click on Lahoud. We don't want to check to see if we pinch it for him now because the score, the score situation could change um, in the top of the inning, and it may change the likelihood that we pinch hit for him. Early in the game, it probably doesn't cha change anything. Um, in fact, until the sixth inning, um, you may not even want to check on things, um, and that's fine. But keep in mind, again, if you do that and you have injuries turned off in your sim, then you may artificially decrease the amount of time that a player is substituted early in the game. So, but completely up to you. So we're going to do end inning. And like I said, we know that the first three guys, uh, we're going to have at least three guys bat in this inning. Pinson, Rojas, and Healy. Unless it's 2020 and it's extra innings, in which case we may only have Pinson and Rojas pitch. Uh, I'm sorry, Vincent and Rojas pin, uh, bat if Brett gets picked off second. Two up, three down. But that's another whole discussion, as you all know. So I know that Pinson, Rojas, and Healy are coming up. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do next batter, next batter, next batter. Now, a couple things that happened here. We checked pin, uh, checked pinch hitting for Veda Pinson because we're now in the second. So now we start checking on pinch hitting. And he has a rating of nine in this score and um, score and inning situation. We generate a random number of 872. 872 obviously is higher than 9, so we don't pinch hit for him. Everything else after that, checking the pinch run for him, 0. Checking the pinch hit for Rojas, 0. 
pinch run for us, zero, and Haley pinch hit zero. So we didn't actually generate a roll, so to speak. Um, so Pinson has a nine. You're going to see that, yeah, he's going to get pinch hit four uh, in the second, third, or fourth when they are uh, tied or ahead. Um, and it, like I said, it's early in the game. So now we can come over here and we can have those first three batters hit. It just adds a little speed instead of all, always having to go back over to your spreadsheet and click every single batter. All right. Healy reached base, so now Patek is up. So we're going to come over here and we're going to click next batter. Doesn't have any recommendations, so we come over here and click roll. Click the pitch. Otis with no recommendations. Now, when I say there's no recommendations, when you get one, it's actually going to pop up a message box for you. And when we get later in the game, uh, hopefully we end up with a suggestion. So now the score changed. McCray is up. So before we go to next batter, McCray is not up in a one nothing situation. McCray is coming up in a 3 nothing situation. And Mayberry is on first now in a 3 nothing situation, not a one nothing situation. So we want to update the score. Three to nothing. You can also just enter the number in there if you want, and then click on next batter. You'll notice that these numbers, 62 instead of 61, 46 instead of 45, those change. That's a behind the scenes column thing. If you want to dig into the data, feel free. It's in some hidden columns in the rosters tab. Knock yourselves out. Don't don't worry about it. Um, single another run scores. It's four nothing. Killebrew is up. We change it to four nothing. We check Killebrew. Wild pitch. Now five nothing. Base on balls. I knew that this was going to be this couldn't be like a high scoring game. I mean couldn't be a low scoring game where we move quickly. Alright, Brett strikes out. And at bat, that's the end of the half inning. So um, before I go on here and bore you with the first few innings of the game, I'm going to interrupt uh, the video recording. I'm going to go to the uh, probably the seventh inning where we're going to start to see some substitution. All right, so we've moved ahead to the top of the seventh. Nolan Ryan is gone. Mandy Hafler is uh, replaced. Replaced him on the mound. To do that, at least right now, and this will probably change, um, we literally type in the player uh, and type in the handedness here. The handedness is important for pitchers when we go to choose pinch runners, uh, sorry, pinch hitters. So you only need to, um, you only technically need to make sure that that person uh, has the right handedness. You could actually leave it as Nolan Ryan. The spreadsheet's not even going to check, ever check what's in that cell. So top of the seventh, Beta Pinson's coming up. Um, now in this case, uh, um, sorry, Cookie Rojas is coming up. In this case, Rojas has a rating of 125. So now we're getting into substitution situations that happen a little bit more um, than they do normally. Early in, early in the game, you were seeing threes and nines and not much of anything. So they're obviously not going to happen much. Um, in this particular case now, we're at a 125. It rolls at 980. Think of it as rolling three percentile dice. Um, and if you know, on rolls of 1 to 125, it actually will recommend that you substitute for them. So what I'm going to do actually here is I'm not going to substitute. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to let Rojas bat. I'm, since this number is 125, it's going to happen once. In a while, I'm actually going to move back to Pinson and and try again. Okay, here we go. So in the second roll, um, it no, oh, because <laughs> I moved back to Pinson, it checked to see if I should pinch run for Pinson, uh, which in this case it did. So here's a suggestion. This is how it'll work anytime it has any sort of suggestion. And again, these are for pinch hitters, pinch runners, or defensive replacements. Okay, suggestion pinch run if you reach base for Veda Pinson. Okay, so let's pretend that the situation happened and Pinson is now on first in a 7 nothing game and we're going to pinch run for him. Now in a 7 nothing game, maybe you think it doesn't make any sense to pinch run. 
maybe it's, you know, he's a regular and if he strikes out, fine, you know, let him play in the field, but the manager thinks, okay, I don't want him on the bases, et cetera, et cetera. Or it's a situation where he ran the first and, you know, uh, messed up his knee hitting first or whatever it is. So some, some sort of injury. Pinch run if you reach base for Data Pinson. So let's handle pinch hitting, pinch running, and uh, defensive replacements. You'll also notice here it checked for Cookie Rojas after it made the pinch run recommendation. So it could have multiple recommendations for you on one play. So let's ignore the rest of the gameplay of coming back and forth until the end of the video here. But let's talk about doing substitutions. If now I want to find a pinch runner for uh, Veda Pinson. <clears throat> I come over here uh, to the Royals bench. I double click on the cell. It says Kansas City Royals bench. You want a pinch hitter? Click yes. Or a pinch runner? Click no. In this case, I want a pinch runner. I click no. And it comes up with suggesting Rodney Scott. It went through all of those players uh, for this particular score and inning scenario and came up with a recommendation on who to use. I click OK. I come over here. I choose Rodney Scott. And if you want to put him in as a pinch runner, you certainly can. Um, you can just choose pinch runner from the drop down. When you click end inning, if Scott is not a um, if Scott is not in the game, you'll need to make that substitution as well. And um, we don't have a way to recommend who comes into the game. As the defensive replacement, we can only tell you when you need to replace it, uh, somebody defensively. So that's how you do a pinch runner. Let's say that the application also had suggested that we pinch hit for Cookie Rojas. We click on the uh, Kansas City bench. Click yes for pinch hitter. All right, do you want any pinch hitter or do you want to choose whether you want a righty or a lefty? Right? If we don't care if we have a righty or a lefty pinch hitter, then we would choose yes. If we care, let's say Hassler is a you know terror against lefties, we don't want a lefty, we're going to click no. And then it says, do you want a left-handed batter for the pinch hitter? Click yes. Or a right-handed batter? Click no. In this case, we're going to choose a righty. Click no. Al Cowens, who luckily in this uh, demo is a righty, and that's my little pup who is barking. Um, dude, he recommended Al Cowens, so we would do that. We also, which we forgot the first time, should remove Cowens and Scott because they were now used to substitute. So that's pinch hitting and pinch running. Let's say we wanted to replace Andy Hassler. We would double click on the Angels bullpen. You want any reliever, or do you specifically want a righty or a lefty reliever? Um, in this case, we're going to say any reliever because it was 7 nothing, And it comes up with Don Kirkwood. So now we would delete Don Kirkwood from here. We'd put in Kirkwood. Um, and I don't know if he's a righty or lefty. We'll say he's a righty. And we continue on with the game. So that's uh, bullpen. That's bringing somebody out of the bullpen as a reliever. Now, very early, early beta version, and it um, will handle some things automatically. For example, right there, when we brought that pitcher in, it will automatically put them in the pitcher spot. It will automatically put their handedness in. It won't automatically put them in the lineup because you may still want to do a double switch, right? Um, and that would be, you know, something that's why we're not going to automatically put them in the lineup, although we could because then you can just switch them around. Um, later. Uh, let's see. End inning defensive replacements. So I'm just going to keep clicking end inning here just to get some. Now you can see George Brett has a 12 rating, which means 1.2% of the time, right? 14% of the time we're going to pull Hal McRae. 1.4% uh, we're going to pull Freddie Potek. 6.7% we're going to pull Cookie Rojas. Um, eventually, we're going to get a defensive replacement that's recommended someday. Let's hope. Had it happen. And I know it works, but naturally, there we go. So even though we're technically not going to the top of the 10th or whatever, 
um, it's well going to the bottom of the tent. It's suggesting that we replace Halmacrae. Then at that point you would just choose your defensive replacement. It will not do it for you. And you would put them, you know, in whatever this left field. So maybe Jim Wolford. So you would come over here and choose Jim Wolford. And he's still in left field. I don't know if he bats righty or lefty. Um, and you'd continue on with the game. So you know, it's it's not it's going to slow your game down. There's no doubt about that. It's going to slow your game down a little bit. But with the trick of checking the first three batters every when you start a half inning, uh, when you start the first, top of the first or the bottom of the first, you should only check the first two batters because that will advance it from uh, all the way down to John May Mayberry or Tommy Harper, and you don't want to advance down to the fourth hitter because they're not definitely going to be coming up. Uh, so you'll want to you know get used to that. The other things that I did um, when I was first testing this is I usually play you know, the games full screen so I can see you know whatever over here I was playing NP3 game over here um, and I'm doing this a lot right and that is a lot of mouse movement so what I did is I actually did this and I copied this and I pasted it and then I moved it down here, which you can definitely do as well. I move these two down here, and now when I go to next batter, it's right there. And again, here we have another suggestion here to pinch it for Ellie Rodriguez when he comes up. So that's basically uh, the spreadsheet right now, very much in beta. And, you know, obviously it has going to have bugs. You're going to be able to break it, um, etc. During this first phase of beta, I would recommend only using uh, as played lineups. Obviously, you're only going to use 1975. That's the spreadsheet. This is the only data that's in the spreadsheet. Uh, when we go quote unquote live, it will be, you know, you'll have a 1972 spreadsheet, a 1984 spreadsheet, etc. So this is only 1975, so trying to play some other game with it isn't going to do you any good. Um, so if you want to test it out, have a, a sim that you have that has 1975, um, use as played lineups, and give it a workout. Um, it will hopefully you know, suggest things that seem to be reasonable. There will be games where it doesn't suggest anything. The only thing that you'll be doing is replacing your pitchers when you want, but at least you'll be able to come over here and go to the Kansas City bullpen. I choose on, I want any relief, I don't care, and it says, give me Doug Bird. So at least you'll be able to pick um, your substitutes a little more fairly, right? Especially if you're playing a single team, and this, this happens for a lot of guys, they don't know how to manage the other team fairly. They don't. They don't want to always bring in the best players because that's not what happened all the time. They don't always want to just bring in a scrub and have an advantage. That didn't happen all the time. This will allow you to manage against a manager, in air quotes, that is using the players as they, he did in real life. So it will be a little more realistic that for you for a single team. When we go live, this debug messages stuff won't, um, won't appear. Like I said, that's just there for now. Um, and you'll probably be doing it full screen instead of side to side unless you have multiple monitors in which case you'll put the auto sub on one monitor and your game on the other so you can see them both at the same time. Key factors again uh, making sure that your rosters are correct so there are the players available <clears throat> um, when you want them to be available. Also when you're playing before you start the game uh, making sure that your anybody on the bench or the bullpen that you don't want to be able to bring in, don't want to be included in that calculation, are not included. So, again, uh, let's go back and start a new, new game. Much faster on my other PC. But, and I don't want Frank Tanana. I don't want Paul Splitorf, and I don't want Marty Pat. And then maybe I, if Frank White is a day off and I really don't want to use him, I'm not going to use him. Now, again, though, all of those times 
when we go live, all of those times you're going to pull somebody from the bench or the bullpen need to be uh, accounted for in this game's available column. To get the best performance, you really need to do that at the beginning of the season. So you've got to have some sort of standard way to always know when to not include Frank Tanana in the bullpen. So let's say Tanana had, you know, 15 days where he had started more than two days ago and didn't start for at least two days. And those are the days that I want him available in the bullpen. I know that ahead of time, I'm going to use him 15 times. I want to make sure that he's active 15 times. I'll get the most realistic usage out of him in that situation. Um, again, though, totally leave it blank. Leave everybody active. Everybody will get their playing time the way they should. My own universes, um, I don't care if I have a starter who went nine yesterday and then he comes in today and he pitches an inning and a third because that appearance is calculated into the stats and just the fact that it happened the day the day after he started doesn't bother me it may bother you um, but that's neither here nor there but that is the beta and i think that i've covered everything that i want to um, if you have questions you can find me on baseballsimresearch.com um, info baseball sim research that's sorry info email baseball sim research at ron hyphen bernier that's b-e-r-n-i-e-r dot -E com uh, you can find me on the delphi forums i'm sure you know uh, how to find me any number of ways so that's the intro to this um, on baseball sim research dot com you'll also find the download link for this spreadsheet the baseball auto sub 1975 spreadsheet to give it a workout, give it a whirl. It does, well, I'm not gonna say that it does require. I developed this on Excel 2013. If you have a version older than that and the macros don't work, uh, my apologies. Um, but uh, basically 2013 is now a eight year old piece of software. So, you know, my recommendation if something doesn't work is going to be upgrade to at least 2013. You can find them cheap on eBay, etc. Um, so that's it from here. Uh, if you made it through this entire video, I'm impressed. Thanks for your time and uh, see you on the web.